today we're going to be working on restricting access to secure shell with acls now when i wrote this lab up i was kind of thinking to myself hmm how does this even make any sense restricting access to secure shell with acls isn't it kind of like overkill and i say that because assuming that we're using ssh to access some sort of remote device somewhere we already have built-in security which are usernames and passwords and the enable secret that is configured on these cisco devices because we're talking about cisco here so i just made up a scenario in my head where we have a disgruntled employee that has login credentials and access to these devices from the IT department, or maybe, or maybe a hacker got hold of these these usernames and passwords somehow, right? And they decided to have some fun with it, right? But I mainly created this lab to work on my ACL skills because ACLs, along with VoIP and wireless are some of my weakness with regard to networking and i decided to take on the challenge of combining multiple concepts into one lab we use configuration of ssh we use acls and we also do a little bit of dhcp relay right because let's look at our topology real quick we have four vlans right here and I have this router acting as a DHCP server for all of these VLANs, right? So what I did instead of creating two DHCP servers, I used this one Cisco router to act as a DHCP server and it um, allowed for me to automate IP addressing configurations on all of these hosts, right? And I might show you how to do the DHCP relay agent real quick, but for now we are going to do this SSH and ACL stuff, right? So as you can see, we have a bunch of notes here and what I'm gonna start doing is creating these packet tracer labs and store them somewhere just in case you guys want access to them and I think that's a good resource to have because now we have the labbing portion and we have the notes right you can see I created extensive notes along with commands it helps me to stay on track with the video it helps me to verify I have some verification commands here and you know get the concepts pinned down right so here we go as i said before in this lab we're going to restrict access to secure shell and we're going to do it on router one and we're going to do it on switch one forget about switch two you can apply the same logic to switch two that you use with switch one essentially i just didn't want to do overkill right so we have these steps right here right my nose keeps itching we have these steps right here right step one which is to enable secure shell on r1 then we have step two configure the appropriate acl denying incoming secure shell traffic from vlans 10 20 and 40 but allowing access from vlan 30. and step three what about admin access to switch one Configure an ACL denying access to this device, except for the IT department. Configure an admin VLAN on switch one and enable IPv4 on it. The same logic can be applied, like I said before, to switch two, but forget about switch two for now, right? Step four, what will happen if we don't apply a statement to allow OSPF traffic on int G00 on R1? So it's important to remember that with access control lists, there's an implicit deny rule at the end of each list right and the router processes the acls from top to bottom 
and there's individual ACEs, access control entries in each access control list. And then there's an implicit deny rule on the bottom, which you can't see, but it's implicitly to deny or the behavior of the processing of ACLs or the nature of ACLs is to implicitly deny all traffic that isn't otherwise specified in the ACLs within ACE, right? So let's start with some basic ACL concepts on top of what we just referred to with regard to the processing of ACLs. Standard IPv4, IPv4 I got tongue twisted. Standard IPv4 ACLs are specified between 1 and 99 or 1300 to 1999. So essentially when you are configuring AC configuring an ACL, you have to specify right here a number to indicate which type of ACL it is. Either it's a standard or an extended, right? And we're going to go through the difference in a second. Extended is 100 to 199 or 2000 to 2699. Now, the difference between standard ACLs and extended ACLs is that standard ACLs allow for only the source um, IP addresses or the source network to be specified, while extended allows for a lot more flexibility with regard to how we want to use our ACLs, our ACEs within those ACLs, right? So extended allows for source IP address, destination IP address, and it also allows for source port and destination port. It also allows for us to specify, uh, there's a few different keywords that we can use with extended ACLs that specify whether we want to um, deny or allow access to a specific port, which is the equals uh, keyword, or we could put the less than, LT, or it could be the greater than or a range, right, of ports that we want to allow or or deny, right? And we're going to see that in a second, right? Standard ACLs are applied near the destination of the packet so as not to unintentionally discard packets that we do not want to discard, right? So if we put a standard ACL, um, super close to the source it's going to end up filtering well we wouldn't put an acl on this uh, on a switch right but we put it well we could do it on the layer three switch but say this is a router right here and we have this subnet right here and we put the standard acl here it's going to filter every piece of traffic every bit of traffic that comes out of there that matches the acl right so ideally we'd want to put it as um, near to the destination as possible. Like say the destination is over here somewhere. We'd probably want to put it right here. So as to filter that specific traffic that's coming in inbound on this interface right here. And extended ACLs are the ex exact opposite. We apply extended ACLs are applied close to the source of the packets so as to not waste bandwidth. So you want to put ACLs, extended ACLs, as close to the source as possible to refrain from having packets traverse the network, suck up all this bandwidth only to be discarded late in the life of the transmission of the packet, right? Of the packets, that's a waste. Just get rid of the packets ASAP, right? As soon as possible. And that's what I stipulated right here in the notes. For example, you wouldn't want a packet that's supposed to be discarded early on in its transit period to bounce around the network, sucking up precious bandwidth, only to be discarded later in its life. That's wasteful. We need to keep in mind as network engineers, future network engineer, engineers, network te technicians, whatever you want to call it, we're trying to we're operating within a business and we want to optimize and make efficient these resources as possible, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to be applying an extended name ACL 
to the sub interfaces on router R1 to only allow access from the IT department to Sichuan's secure shell. That's a reminder mainly to myself because as I was doing this lab, I was thinking, hmm, I have router on a stick configured here. Do I apply the ACL on the physical interface or do I apply it to each sub interface? And is there a more efficient way to go about that? So I said, you know what, screw it. I'll just apply it to each sub interface, which is not as much of a pain in the ass as I would think it would be. But um, yeah, I went ahead and did that, right? So we made it through the basic ACL concepts. Now we can get into some basics of the um, configuration, right? Which is to enable secure shell on router R1 and switch one, right? So I don't know, I might switch your order up, but we're gonna start with enabling secure shell on R1. This is important for the CCNA because there's a specific order by which you have to follow in order to enable secure shell on a router, even a switch on Cisco devices in general. So let's click on this and let's start with our configurations. Oh, before we even do that, Let's go over the network topology real quick. I know you want to jump into the ACL configuration. I'll probably include timestamps at some point so that you can see what I'm doing. You could just jump to it if you want, if you want, right? As I mentioned before, we have router on a stick configured. That way we can have inter VLAN routing between these VLANs, right? And we also have uh, configuration over here. We don't have router on the stick over here. This is a simple network. Maybe this is some, I don't know, branch site. Let's use our imagination, some sort of branch site somewhere. And we are using this router right here as a DHCP relay agent. If you want a preview into how to configure DHCP relay, let's look at some configuration real quick. So we have the helper address right here, which specifies our DHCP server, which is over here. It's this interface right here, right? So when these hosts are looking for a DHCP server and they send out their discover message, it's going to propagate up the link. It's gonna hit the router. The router is gonna say, oh, okay. These hosts are looking for a DHCP server. I know where that is. And it sends it over to this link right here. The key, here is that the router knows where it is. That's routing, right? And it has that destination route right in its routing table. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. It knows where this network is because it's directly connected to it and it's in its routing table. So there's, there's pretty much that for all you need to know for DHCP relay for now for now because when you start to configure DHCP snooping it gets a little bit more technical a little more complicated right so you I'm not even gonna go into that let's just go into the configuration now because see this is where I get a little bit too excited and I start going into the details of DHCP snooping and all this other stuff that we don't need to so the first thing you want to do log into the router enable conf t and then we want to create a host name. A host name is essential for creating that fully qualified domain name needed to create the crypto keys, right? The RSAs, right? So host name, we're gonna call it R1, right? And then we're gonna do crypto key generate RSA. That's definitely not a, um, it's not case sensitive. So what you see here is it says, please define a domain name. You have to define a domain name or you'll get this message right here. Important to know, remember I said there's a order by which you have to configure these commands in order for them to work, in order for a secure shell to um, be created, right? Or be enabled, excuse me. So. We enter this command, IP domain name, IPVdre.tech. Check out that 
domain name. That's an actual website, my actual website. And then now we're going to do crypto key generate RSA. And it's going to ask us um, general purpose keys. Choosing a key modulus greater than 512 may take a few minutes, right? So specify the length 120. Boom. Now notice, notice what happens when we hit enter. SSH enabled. So when we go through that three step process, it automatically enables secure shell on the router. It's disabled by default, right? So the next thing that we want to do, if we, if we want, we can enable secure shell, um, version two, but we're not going to do that. I think it's IP secure shell. I think it's IP SSH version two. I think that's the command, but we're not going to configure that. We're just going to keep it moving. Right? So now we have the fully qualified domain name set, the crypto keys set. And now we want to go into the VTY line and only enable secure shell, right? I think this is kind of like hardening the router too, because I wouldn't want to use um, Telnet to remote access into any device because everything is in the clear. All of your data communications is in the clear, right? So next step, transport input secure shell login local and then we're going to exit out now we're going to create some local usernames and passwords right username ipv dre secret uh cisco there we go and we could create another one just for fun Username, I don't know, Dre, Secret, Cisco. Now, this is necessary because we have login local here. When we want to log into Secure Shell, we need these usernames and passwords, right? And the reason why we're configuring ACLs in our imaginary network is because we're going to imagine some would be hacker or malicious person got access to all of these credentials some way somehow i don't know and we have another line of defense which are acls that prevents people from getting access to the networking equipment using these um local usernames and passwords right on the machines so the next step we have to consider is that in order for secure shell to work we have to configure and enable secret. If we don't, we're not going to be able to gain access to the enable mode, right? So there we go, right? Um, the next step is, let's see. The next step is let's do the same thing on switch one, except you know what? Hmm. Because switch one is a little bit more involved. Let's set it up on switch one as well. Let's just go to switch one and let's just set up secure shell on these devices. And then we can start worrying about ACLs, right? So we have everything set on this router. Let's just double check. Everything is set up, right? Now the next step, let's go to switch one and let's do some setup, right? I'm gonna do essentially the same thing we did with router one but we have to take another step. So comp T, we have our um, host name set already. So we're just gonna do IP domain, domain name, IP v dre dot tech. And the next thing we're gonna do, crypto key generate RSA. Get those tokens going. I just put 124. Secure shell is enabled automatically. Line VTY 0 through 15. And then we're going to do transport input secure shell, which essentially only allows secure shell. Login local. Exit. Let's create some usernames and passwords. I like to put some space between 
username, IPv Dre, secret, Cisco, and let's do another one. Username, Dre, secret, Cisco. All right, so now we have to enable IPv4 on switch one. And in order for us to do that, we create a switch virtual interface. But in order to create that switch virtual interface, we have to make sure that we have a VLAN ready for it, right? As you can see here, I'm going with VLAN 88, right? Eight is my favorite number, so that's what we're doing. But first, let's see if the VLAN is already configured because I believe I already did this. Let's save it, let's save it. Don't want it crashing on me and not being able to pick up where I left off. So, do show VLAN. Let's see. Okay, VLAN 88 is already created and I named it admin, right? Now, what we're gonna do is create interface for the VLAN, right? Interface VLAN 88. Now we have the interface for it. Now we're going to give it an IP address that will typically be in the same subnet as its default gateway. And we have IP add 192.168.88.88.255.255.255.0. And this is gonna be the IP address by which secure shell telnet is gonna be reachable by. But we don't have telnet allowed on this device, right? So it's already up, but we could still put no shut just in case. Exit out, IP default gateway, 192.168.88.254, all right? And then IP name server, Let's go with Cloudflare, and then now, We've already enabled um, secure shell on it, set up the passwords. And now let's check the router to make sure that we have um, a VLAN set up or the default gateway set up on, or the IP address interface set up for the reachability for the switch, right? So we're going to um, do show IP in brief. Yes, we already do. Right, we already have this sub interface set up. It's in the same subnet as the switch, but let's test it. Let's test it to make sure that we have connectivity. Do ping 192.168.88.254. Yep, we have connectivity. So that means that that's good to go. Now, what is our next step? Our next step is to start configuring the ACLs. And I'm gonna do that. First, let's, let's see what happens. Let's, let's test it, because I wanna make sure that, you know, the ACLs actually work, right? So let's try to get into this router from VLAN 10, 20, and 40, right? DTP is already set up. And we're just gonna do, I always, I always do ping, cause I'm so used to pinging from here. So we're gonna do secure shell, login, and we're going to do um, usernames. Let's say they got our username, IPv Dre, and then we're gonna put the IP address of the default gateway. I mean, we could do multiple IP addresses. I think this, I think Secure Shell will be reachable from multiple IP addresses. We could test it out. Um, 10.254, yeah. So we're allowed access. And there we go, enable Cisco, oops. Did I type it wrong? C-I-S, oops. What did I set it as? Oh, <laughs> I put enable secret, secret. That's why I couldn't get in. Wasn't paying attention. So 
The enable secret is gonna be secret, not Cisco. Let's try again. Yeah. Right, all right, so VLAN 20. See if we can access it from, let's see if we can access the router from a different, from a different IP address. I mean, we should, right? Secure shell. IPv tray. Um, the IP address, let's try one of its outside IP addresses. Yep, you can. See? So we've successfully got remote access, right? Let's try this network over here. Cause this is on the other side of the network. It's on the, it's on the other side of this router. Secure shell L IPv Dre and 192.168.40.254. That's its default gateway. Closed by foreign host. What did I miss? Why is it closed by foreign host? That's interesting. Let's save. Forty dot two five four. Well, I got a reply. Do I have a? Please don't tell me I did. I did a secure. I didn't do a um access list on it already. So show access list. No, there's no access lists. Show IP access list. So, hmm, I wonder why I'm getting that. Closed by, let me see something. One seven two dot 16 dot one dot one yeah i don't know i wasn't able oh i was trying to reach the wrong router 192.168.40.254 is the default gateway of the router of its default gateway right that ip address was for this default gateway i was trying to reach it as if it was under the same um in the same uh network over here right so yeah well they timed out right so this message i just learned just literally just now connection to this ip address closed by foreign host that means that secure shell is not active on there it's not enabled and it didn't even allow it right so now what we're going to do is we're going to start setting up the access control lists and we're going to set it up it's going to be super straightforward um it's going to be super straightforward when you really see what it is right so access control list on r1 we're going to start with r1 and we're going to restrict access to the vty line secure shell vty lines secure shell only to the it department the it department is right here we also have our sales department and vlan 10 and our hr department in vlan 20 and vlan 40 i don't know who those people are but it's just the i guess it's the pink department i don't know because it's pink so now we're going to configure um restricting access to only the it department and how we do that is this access list one oops access list one permit 192.168.30.0 and we're going to use a wildcard mask 0 .0 0 0.0.0.255 right so we created the access list right now this access list means permit access to this network right here. Only this network right here. All other traffic, deny it. Why? Because let's verify the access list. 
that's verified do uh yeah i gotta do do show so we see this access list right it's saying standard ip access list one permit this network at the bottom right here it's an implicit deny it implicitly is going to deny all traffic and we're going to see how that works when we configure um an access list for um access to restricting access to the switch right here to the it department we're going to apply it right here we're going to see what happens when we don't set a rule that'll allow um ospf right or we don't allow all of the traffic right so let's see something show show access list can i do show access list one yeah standard ip access list yeah show an access list one so if you want to verify you can show all of the access lists configured on this router using this command or if you just want to see one you'll use this command specifying the access list number and yeah you can see the statement right here right and you see the sequence number the sequence number is right here and there's two ways to configure access lists there's this way right here using the access list command and the number and then putting in the specified um entry details if you will and you can also use the named version where you just do ip access list you can do named i can name it test oh you can't you have to you have to specify whether it's standard or extended standard test um and then we're in the names we're in the named acl configuration mode right i created that that was just a test and now we can do extended extended test two same thing right or we can do it with the we can do it with there's this difference between this numbered acls and this named acl so we just did the numbered acls and then we did the named acls with our test acls we can also do the numbered acls with kind of like it's kind of like the same as a named acl i think it's the same except you're just using the number right so you do this you could do ip access list standard one same thing right and then you could just start putting your entries in that way now the difference between configuring the access list this way and configuring the access list this way is that I shouldn't have put one because I might have just X this out. Let me see something. Do show access list one. Yeah, it's still there. It's still there. So the difference is that when you create an access list this way and you create a bunch of entries in that access list and you want to delete one of the entries you have to delete the whole access list that sucks so ideally what you want to actually do is this right let's say we have this um permit any any um permit any my bad this is standard um and deny Let's put deny, let's put a, a fake address. Deny 192.168.7.6, right? And then now let's look at the access list. Let's look at the IP access list standard, right? So we're gonna do show access list. And we see our total, our um, access lists that are configured on the router. And we see this one, which is configured using the access list command. And we see this list using the IP access list um, command, right? And we see two, two entries here. So now if I want to delete this entry, all I have to do is this IP access list 
test. Oops. Standard test. And all I gotta do is no 20. And then now, let's do show access list and it's gone. Simple as that, right? Now, let's move on, right? We have our standard IP access list that permits secure shell traffic or traffic from the IT department, right? And now we just have to apply it to the VTY line. And how we do that is we do line VTY 015, and then we use this keyword, access class in, right? Oops, did I forget something? Oh, I forgot the, um, the number. Access class one in, don't forget that number. So you're seeing the common um, errors that can be made when configuring access lists. One you just saw just now, if you do not specify the number of the ACL, how is it gonna know which access list to apply to the VTY line, right? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna exit out, right? Also, just wanna stop right here to talk about the importance of using logic when we're configuring ACLs, right? So I have down right here, it said, configuration of ACLs required three things from us. We have to plan, we create the ACL, and we have to apply it. Now, when we're applying the ACLs, we have to consider the direction that we are, you know, configuring the ACL for, right? So you notice that I put a keyword in here. This means anybody who's trying to secure shell in to this VTY line, right? Is not gonna get access um, except for the IT department. If I had put out, that would have been irrelevant and it would be a misapplied ACL and traffic would be allowed to the VTY line, right? Let's demonstrate that real quick. We have in, which is applied correctly. And again, this is very important stuff to know. ACLs is on the CCNA exam objectives, and that's something that you're expected to know, and all of the errors as well, right? So now let's secure shell. Let's try to secure shell in. Connection refused by remote host. Now, what happens when we try to do it from the IT department? Secure shell, login, IPv Dre, 192.168.30.254. Password. Oops. I can't type. Voila, we're in, right? Now, while we're in, while we're in here, right, let's go and put the out keyword on this router right here for the VTY line. So conf T and then we're gonna have, let's show access list one. Should have put do in front of it, I keep forgetting. Oh, apparently you can't do that on here right because i'm doing it from the computer so i'm in i'm in the it department doing some configurations on this router right here and now what we're going to do is you see it says two matches right so we matched the acl matched it two times right it shows right here details right also something that you should know with the show commands now what we're going to do is line vty 0 through 15 and then we're gonna do um, access class. We're gonna put no access class one in, which removes it. And then we're gonna put access class one out, which is 
uh, misapplying the ACL. We're gonna put it in the, the wrong direction now. Now let's see if we can get in. Now we can get in because we misapplied the ACL. So now that's a security flaw, right? See, now we're in the router also. Initially, we wanna make sure that's correct, right? So now let's put no. Let's see if it, let's see if I put in, if, if it cancels it out. I don't know, let's see. I like to try things out sometimes. Yeah, connect, it cancels it out, right? If you just, you know, instead of putting a no in front of it and then retyping the command, you could just change the command, but it has to be the same um, access list number, obviously, right? So we just restricted access to only the IT department. Let's try from all the way over here. Connection refused by remote host. Again, nobody except for the IT department can get in right let's let me show you again all right only the IT department is allowed access oops right and you need that enable password to get in or else they're not even gonna let you get past the user mode user mode is one step below enable mode right or executive privilege mode right let's save this so now we have switched one we want to deny access to switch one right to from anybody getting into this switch except for the IT department now down here we have the commands right and this is going to be a little bit more involved because we're using extended you're using an extended acl and we have to apply this acl on multiple interfaces so we create the acl one time and then we're going to apply it to multiple interfaces right simple enough let me see what i have here boom perfect so now we're gonna configure this on router R1 because the switch is connected to R1. So anybody who wants to get access to the switch has to first be able to have to first be able to get through the router, right? One of my professors said it was something like ACLs or something like um, customs or immigration or something like that. You know, if you have to travel, you have to go through a process of processing in order for you to get into the country or get out of the country or what have you whatever it is right so it's similar to that if this pc this user wants to communicate or wants to get into this switch on an admin level they have to get past the router who's going to check their authorizations against the access list which is you know their ip address and you can specify other things as well but we used ip address here and yeah you're either allowed or you're not only the it department is allowed so let's work on that we're going to build out another access list right and we're going to use the old configuration i call it old or traditional access list uh are we using yeah we are we're using extended ACLs, right? No, we're using a new configuration. That's what we're doing. IP access list 101 makes it easier to add and delete ACEs, right? Access list extended, extended 101, right? And then now we're gonna add the statement permit TCP 192.168.30.0 0.0.0.255 host 192.168.88.88 equals 22. So that's a lot, right? So I'm going to type it in first, issue this command, and then we're going to talk about it. 192.168.30.0.0.0.255 um, host 
192.168.88.88 equals 22. So basically, and let's verify, do show IP access list verified, right? We're there. There's another command that we can use. We're gonna use, we could do, do show IP interface, right? It shows whether access lists are applied. We can use this information to show whether access lists are applied or not. Okay, this is a lot, a lot of output. I probably shouldn't have done that, but um, let's go back. So what this statement here says is permit secure shell traffic from the IT department, which is in 192.168.3.30.0 to the host of 192.168.88.88. Simple, simple as that, right? Extended ACLs uses source and destination. This is source and this is destination, including the ports, right? So this equal keyword means exactly this port right here. If we used LT less than, it would say, okay, permit access to every port less than 22, or it could be greater than 22, or it could be within a specified range, such as 22 to 80. There's different ways that you can stipulate the control that you wanna to allow to a specific host or network, right? So now that we got this, we have to apply it to interfaces. Now, let's apply this ACL to each of these interfaces. Interface G01, IP access group 101 inbound, right? Next one is going to be 20. And we're applying this on the sub interfaces that we created, right? Those are the sub interfaces. And also can't forget about our buddies over here, right? We wanna deny access to them as well. Let's just save this. And how we do that is applying the ACL on this outside interface right here, which is G00. And that's interface G00, right? Now watch what happens, watch what happens. So now let's see if we can access Let's see if we can access this switch. See if we can access switch one. Nope, connection timed out, remote host not responding. That means that we don't have access to it, right? The IT department though, IT, IT department has access. Cisco, no password set, no password set. So if you don't have an enable password set, it's not even going to allow you to get into enable, right? That is like the third la layer of security right there. So let's set the enable password. Let's go ahead and do that. Where were we right here? Oh, now we're in, right? 
and we're doing this in such a way so that when you're preparing for the exam you know you're doing your own labs you can see how these things work right and trust me i used to suck when it came to acls i still kind of do because you again you have to apply the logic to it you can know how to apply it or know the the bare bones the functionality and all that stuff but you have to also apply the logic to it it's kind of like programming kind of like programming right you can't just think that you're gonna know the the material and then you, you also you got to know how to use it you can have a sword in your hand but you have to know how to use it properly right and I think these are weapons. These are weapons to defend our networks. Oh, by the way, this is cybersecurity as well, right? You gotta know this stuff if you wanna go into cybersecurity. I can't imagine, I don't, I don't really know too much about the whole cybersecurity world, but I can't imagine cybersecurity without knowing ACLs or understanding ACLs because firewalls use ACLs, right? I don't know, C correct me if I'm wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. So now we applied these, we applied this ACL, right? Everything should be all good, right? Let's check. Now we have an, now we have an issue. Our OSPF adjacency went down. Went from full to down, neighbor down, dead timer expired. From full to down, neighbor down, interface down or detached. So the router is telling us two things it's telling us that it hasn't received a hello in 40 seconds which is the the default dead timers four times the hello which is 10 seconds right so in ospf routers send hello messages every 10 seconds and if they don't receive a hello message after 40 seconds they assume that the router is unreachable. It, I guess right here in this situation, it's assuming that the interface went down or it's detached. It's like, I don't know. It's either the interface went down or it's detached. Um, and yeah, it's donezo for that, right? So what happened is when we applied this ACL, remember the implicit deny, we only allow this is saying we're only allowing traffic from the IT department deny all other traffic and it's the same for over here too right if we have some sort of other type of traffic over here I don't know maybe I don't know we have phones or something like that and we don't specify you know um we pretty much all traffic is 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 denied to this to this interface right here that's effect that's effectually except for the it department's traffic so we could have other things going on over here and that we brought down unintentionally so that's where the planning comes in when it comes to acl configuration you have to take into consideration all of the devices that are connected to the network and you have to configure for it, right? And you have to do it with the least amount of ACEs. Those are the two things that I'm kind of like not too good with right now because, you know, I haven't really applied ACLs much in, you know, my home network. I've done it, I've done it a few times or my lab network. I've done it a few times, but again, there's only so much you could do in the home, right? But as long as you have the logic down, you have your weapons, and you know how to take instructions properly, you can configure this properly. So how do we fix this? How we fix this is we're going to go back into the ACL, and we're going to add another statement. So how we do that is we do IP access list extended 101 right and then now we're gonna do permit ip any any 
right? So it went back up, right? So now it's back up. Let's try to access it again. Let's see if we can get access to it. It allowed it, right? Because it went through the ACLs, right? And what it did was it said, okay, checking here, we're allowing the IT department. Checking here, we're permitting all traffic. So now we have an issue where we solve the problem with the adjacency. Now we have to solve the problem with, okay, now we have to explicitly um, deny certain networks or certain, certain networks, right? So it timed out. So now we gotta go back to the drawing board. How are we gonna deny access to all these other networks and only allow this one? So, and, and still allow the adjacency, the hello messages to be propagated across the link. So what we can do is now we can just say, hmm, let's go back in here. Now, what we could do is you go back into the ACL and then let's do show. I want to just look at it real quick do show IP access list extended. I think I could just type that, right? Let's see if that works. Do show. Nope, do show, do show IP access list. So it's at 24 matches, right? So now, how about we enter denies, right? And then we permit OSPF traffic, right? So we're going to no 20. Let's get rid of that real quick. Do show IP access list, right? So now we're left with that. And then we could also do no 10. You're gonna get rid of that one. And then how about if we put deny, let's put three deny statements. Deny, we don't have to even put three deny statements. No, yeah, we do because they're all in the same subnet. So deny TCP 192. I'm pretty sure there's a, a, a more efficient way to do this. But let's just free ball it and see what's going on. Um, 10.0.0.0.255. And it's going to be to, oops, yep, that's right. And then it's going to be equals 22, right? So we're denying traffic from this VLAN. Oops, and then we have to put the destination, 192.168.88.88, right? Yeah. Where did I screw up? Deny. Let me stretch it out. Am I missing some syntax? Um, deny TCP. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It's a lot of, a lot of output, a lot of output, and it's not showing. Okay, so what did I type wrong? I'm trying to find my error here. Deny from here to here equals 22. What is the issue? Do show IP access list. Okay, it has nothing in there. Cool. 
So let's write it again. I don't know. D deny TCP um, 192.168.10.0.0.0.255. Oh, host. I forgot the host command. Sometimes you just have to just rewrite everything out, expand your senses. It's still, oh gosh, I put a comma. Okay, there we go. And then now we have to deny it from VLAN 20. And then we're gonna deny it from VLAN 40. But then now we have to allow OSPF traffic. So I need to look that up real quick. See, it went down, of course, because we just add in some stuff. Let me see. I think it, I think we just add Do I add an OSPF to it? I'm looking for the keyword. Let's 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 just add OSPF. Um, permit OSPF any any. Let's see if that fixes it. This is the part where yeah, there we go. Permit OSPF any any, right? And it's denying all other traffic. So deny TCP traffic going there. Deny TCP traffic going there. And we permitting we're permitting OSPF. Now I'm starting to think about my um, setup because the logic, the logic has to match. Because now if I am allowing these three, um, denying these three VLANs, allowing this VLAN, it's denying that VLAN, it's allowing this VLAN, but all other traffic Now, if I want to ping across, see, this is where I need to work on the logic of it. But this is basically destination host unreachable because the implicit deny rule at the bottom, right? So I guess we can just add a rule that says, um, I'm pretty sure there's a better way to do this. Permit IP I'd have to probably add three rules that would allow traffic, all of the traffic to the VLAN, right? But if I put permit If there's a way for me to apply it closer than I would, maybe if I use a, a layer, if I use a layer three switch, that would probably, it'd probably work. But anyway, that's pretty much how to apply, configure, verify, and apply. And I say apply ACLs because when you're messing around with ACLs and when you're learning ACLs, this is where it gets a little tricky. You have to know 
how to apply these ACLs in such a way that you don't cause network outages on obviously your network, right? And this is a part where things can get a little bit tricky and you need more practice. And that's pretty much that for the configuration portion of the lab. Um, let me see. So that's pretty much that. We could spend, we could just sit here and see, hmm, what would allow for this? Where should I apply this ACL? I applied it on the router. If I, let's save this, don't want it to crash. Maybe, what if I, I applied it on this inbound right here, but I think ideally it would have been better if I applied it on the switch itself. Maybe a layer three switch. I think I could do that on a layer three switch. But it's tricky because if I want to, yeah, if I want to, let's do this. I'm being lazy, but I think there's a more efficient way to do this. So permit. Just concentrating real quick. So I'm being a little bit more crafty. So we're saying permit IP traffic from 192.168.0.0 slash 16, which means all of these networks, right? To, I don't know, this might not even be this might be stupid, but there's probably a better way to do this. I'm well aware, right? Permit, right? You're permitting all of this traffic, right? Now let's see if I can ping. This is that, I don't know. I think that's kind of stupid for some reason. I mean, it works, it works, but I think it's stupid. I don't know why. So let's look at our access list again. Do show IP access list. Let's look at our access list again. I don't know if this is the most efficient way, but it works. So what we attempted to do here is to restrict access only to allow the IT department to get access to this switch right here with this access list in particular right so what we did was we we set up three statements that denied access to secure shell into this host right here right so this deny statement essentially says deny access to the secure shell of host 192.168.88.88 from all of these networks right here. Then permit OSPF traffic on this interface. Well, not it's not explicit for this interface, but it's permit traffic, permit OSPF traffic, and then It says permit IP, um, and then we're permitting all networks to, to reach all networks here, which makes sense, it works. But now what if I put, let's put a permit any any at the end of that, right? Permit IP any any, which allows all of the traffic. Because again, you have to imagine that there's other things going on I don't know, maybe there's streaming services, whatever, whatever. So you could put IP any, any, right? And I think it would still be safe because you gotta remember how access lists are 
processed, top down. Once it matches this statement, it matches the statement. Matches this statement, matches the statement. Matches, matches. Matches, allows the traffic. Then, if it matches, or it matches or, or it um, allows or denies, depending on this. Permit, it matches, cool, right? So I think it should be fine. This access list should work. It should not allow traffic to the switch, um, to the uh, admin, to the admin VLAN or to the secure shell, to secure shell lens. So let's see. Nope, it doesn't work. So it worked. I had to sit here and think for a little bit. And that's what, that's what this evol in involves, right? But let's see if, let's see if this still works. Yep, still works. So that was our ACL lab. It took a little bit of thinking, right? But I think that when it comes to answering ACL questions, you really have to understand the logic that goes into the specific applications of certain ACLs because